Hey everybody, thanks for coming back to hang out. I got my steel hat on, so you know what that means, some more steel content. It's Friday night in the shop. Hope you guys had an awesome week. Uh, my week flew by. My new life is a busy one and I love it. Very busy at work and very busy at home and uh, I feel more alive now than I ever have. My life has purpose and uh, it's good. Everything's going well over here and uh, Hope you guys are uh, living life with a sense of purpose, if you know what I mean. I don't want to get too deep. It is Friday, right? It's a, it's a night of relaxation, or as I relax by doing work. What are we doing tonight? Well, friends, first of all, I want to say thank you to everybody that took the time to comment. Um, I love when you guys comment. I appreciate it. And uh, we got a bazillion comments on the O26 video when I asked you guys, what do you want me to do with this? Stay tuned in the next video. Um, we'll, we'll talk about what we're going to do to this saw. But before we do anything to this saw, I've had many people comment on the last video that I was working on it. When I took the cases apart, I said, I'm not sure if these cases are any good. And then I showed that I have a parts carcass. That was, as you guys mentioned, an MS-260 with the flippy caps. And I said, worst comes to worst, I'll have to break that carcass down for the cases. And uh, I had quite a few emails and comments saying, you have to build it. You have to build it as an O26 or, you know, it just won't be right. And I agree. I want this with the old school caps on it. But honestly, if these cases are no good, uh, I don't build looking at saws or saws that sit on a shelf. Um, and yeah, I guess I could build this real nice and put a sticker on it and you guys, a lot of you guys would love to have it on yourself, but for me, I want you guys to run the stuff that I build. And, uh, so anyways, today's video, we got to clean these cases up. You guys have seen them. They're, uh, they're all kinds of dirty and, uh, I want to get these things prepped and ready for a rebuild, you guys can see in there, this thing's filthy. Um, all that oil and debris actually is good. It kind of pickles the paint and keeps the paint nice. But as you guys can see, there is definitely corrosion in here, which worries me a little bit. I want to make sure when this thing's clean that there's nothing going into the parts that need to seal. So today's video, let's clean these and there's no better way to clean them then then an ultrasonic cleaner, of course. What did you guys think? Now, friends, when I first started working on saws, I didn't mind. I didn't mind scrubbing. But you know what? <laughs> a fella, a fella gets real tired, at least I do. You get tired of cleaning dirty, dirty, dirty saws all the time. It's uh I don't know. It loses its love. Uh, at least I've lost my love for it. So let's get this thing plugged in. This is just a no-name, oh, there we go, ultrasonic cleaner, and uh, I I didn't, I, I know there's a lot of companies that are sending these out, I bought this one, friends, with my own money, and uh, it works pretty good. So, I put some Dawn dish soap in there, and I have four liters of hot tap water, I don't know if this is going to be enough. I think I'm going to end up needing more than this. That's one gallon if uh, you're south of the border. Or I don't know anywhere else where they use gallons and miles. But uh, for my American friends down there, I always try and tell you guys in the uh, right units. Okay, um, I think I'm going to run to the house and grab some more water. Give me a second here. I got another jug of warm water. Again, lots of Dawn dish soap. And uh, let's see what we can do. Now, I want you guys to see these before. Okay, I'll turn your light on here. Okay, these things are absolutely filthy. And uh, typical of a, of a, you know, a well-used saw. I took the gaskets off. Uh, I'll finish that after I clean them. That's no big deal. And I'm going to leave the bearings in just for now. Let's look at the other one. Super typical of a firewood saw. You can't get into there. 
Um, the inside of the saw, it looks cleaner than, you know, the outside. Again, I want to inspect all this damage down here and just see. So, first thing I'm going to do, I'll take these outside and blow them off with my blow gun. That's always step one for me. Get the heavy stuff off. Um, because I find these ultrasonics, they work great. Especially if you put gasoline in here. But I don't like putting straight gas in here. It stinks uh, with the heat and all that. It's probably not the safest thing, the fumes. Um, but for doing carburetors and that, I'll use like a, I'll use a, a mason jar. I'll put gas in there. I'll put the carburetor in and I'll actually put that in water. That seems to work good. Actually, right here, friends, um, this is my... This is my carb cleaning jar, and I just go shook and put it in there. It works fantastic. But for this application, we got to use water. So, like I said, I'll uh, I'll blow these cases off with the good old Princess Auto blow gun, and uh, we'll go from there. And I'll show you guys how I set it, and then I'll just let this thing rock and roll for about an hour. And at the end of the hour, we'll come back and have a look see. Okay, a little work with the blow gun. You can see these things are still super oily, super dirty. And uh, I'll just throw them in like that. Okay, let's see you guys can see. There's still a lot of crud stuck. I'm hoping, I'm hoping not to have to scrub these. And I mean, in a pinch, you can take a little steel wool or a little, not steel wool, uh, Scotch bright. There you guys go. It is Friday, right? We're not our sharpest on Friday. At least I'm not. I'm a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday kind of guy. So, anyhow, we're just going to fire this thing up and let this ultrasonic work its magic. Um, mine is in, mine is in Celsius, 65 degrees Celsius. I turn mine way up. I like it hot. Um, it's already at 31. So 31 is about 100 degrees Fahrenheit. So we're going to go, that'll be about 200 degrees Fahrenheit. And minutes. I'll go about 90 minutes. And uh, turn it on. Now these make funny noises on camera. So if you hear a weird whistling, it's actually this thing. Okay. I'll turn it on. Okay. Now I don't know if I could fit two of these in here at once. I'm going to give it my best shot to do so. I should have bought the bigger one, friends. Always buy the big motor. I think that's a rule to live by. Always buy the big one. Now, if I lean these like this, and I pour more water in here, I think we'll have just enough. I want these fully submerged. Okay. Now, you guys have seen in other videos, I hope, um, these things are really good for cleaning stuff like this. Stuff like this, you take dirty plastic and throw it in here, there's not enough room. But, uh, you know, your clutch cover and that, uh, these things just do an excellent job, especially if the water's hot. Um, Dawn dish soap works really well. Um, Simple Green, other things like that. Um, I've been going to the Dawn dish soap because it's not hard on my hands. And uh, really happy with these. I don't think you're supposed to, I don't think you're supposed to stick your fingers in here while it's running. Somebody's telling me that. I had no idea. But, uh, as you guys can see, it's already working its magic. It's starting to rinse off the grease and grime. And so these are, these things are not cheap. At least they're not in Canada shipped. They're, uh, they're worth a few bucks. But I mean, if you wrench in your shop and you do anything that's greasy, dirty, car parts, carburetors, small engine stuff. Um, these are a really good investment. Okay, I'm going to turn this thing back on. I'm going to go do some yard work, mow, or whatever. You guys know I'm always mowing. And, uh, I'll just let this thing go. We'll see what this thing did when the time is up. There, because I know that this makes kind of an annoying sound on video. I found that out the first time I filmed this. Okay, we have 23 minutes and 35 seconds left. Water temperature is 44 degrees Celsius. Um, I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit. Uh, 115, something like that. Um, I always just crank this to like 65. It's rare that it gets that hot. 
I have put boiling water in here, but I find honestly, friends, if you put enough dish soap, there's no problems. Okay, I have not touched these. Um, I flipped them over once. I'll do that. I'll just, I'll put them a different way. Um, just to make sure that, I don't know, the, however these things work, the ultrasonic rays are getting to them. But, uh, let's turn the light on here and pull these out. Now, friends, you know why I like this? Because life's busy. I'm a busy guy and, you know, I, I got a lot of things on the go at all times. Anybody that knows me knows I'm, I'm always doing something. And, uh, I was cutting grass again tonight. Uh, it's the, um... It's the July long weekend coming up, Canada Day. That's our nation's birthday, or my nation's birthday. And uh, I want to get the grass cut so I don't have to do it this weekend. I can hang out, have some family time, work on some saws. So um, I cut, you know, two, three acres of grass while this thing was cleaning. And that, that's what I like about this. Um, is this the be-all and end-all of cleaning? No. Um, sometimes you gotta scrub it a little with a toothbrush or blow the crud off, but I mean, for cleaning saw parts, for me, this is as good as it's gotten because it's, there's no labor involved. It's, it's just so easy. Okay. Got the light on here. Look at how clean these cases are. Okay. Nothing left in the oil tank. All that debris that was in here is gone. Okay, now we can have a, a good look at these cases. Let's look at this side. This said the water's hot. Um, it's hot to the touch, not hot enough to burn me. Um, but you can see it's it's steaming. Again, uh, this oil tank was full of chips. And, uh, you know, bottom end was discolored. And like there's there's nothing left in there. There's no chips, there's no debris, there's no there's no anything. So here's the flywheel side. Now again, this is the part I was concerned about, and I may just leave you guys set up here. Cause uh, I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna jack the timer up and I'm gonna throw all the parts that I don't want to clean by hand, I'm gonna throw them all in here. And let them go. And when this unit's done on the timer, it'll shut the whole unit off. So I don't even have to babysit this thing. Um, I think though, friends, honestly, I'm going to invest in the one that's twice this size. I think I'm going to buy the biggest one I can order online. You know why? You know what I want to do? I want to be able to put a whole saw in here. A whole case, cylinder, everything. I'd like to throw a saw in here before I break it down. Get all the crud off the outside and then break it down and whatever's left, put it back in there again. But I, I think, I think that would be the way to go with this. But anyways, that's a, that's a deal for another time. Maybe I'll just order one. We can try it. Okay. So these cases, as you guys can see, I got the light on, uh, quite a bit of corrosion. It's worn this away here. Um, and again, a lot of you guys were like, you have to use those cases. That's part of the saw. If you put the ms260 cases on it won't be the same i agree but if if these cases are no good well they're no good they're garbage right i can make another saw cutaway um that's how the saw cutaway came to be the one side of the case had a hole rotten through it and i couldn't rebuild that saw so um i noticed that with steels of this vintage this okay if they sit on the floor or in moisture in or in a wet shop i find it really eats them this vintage of steel. Now they are great saws, but if they're neglected, they definitely show it. Okay, so first things first, we're concerned about this area in here. Our bottom end, if there's a hole that goes through, well, guess what? We're going to have a massive air leak and we're going to have no way of, of controlling that. We're not going to be able to do anything with it. Yes, you could JB weld these, um, sand and paint. Um, you could paint the corrosion. But friends, I don't want to send you guys a problem or a project. One of you guys is going to get a running saw from me. I don't want to send you a headache, okay? Uh, when I send a saw, you guys know me, I only build the old stuff. And this stuff is hard to build, especially when you're mailing it across the country. When I build the saw, friends, they're not all perfect. Um, they do have problems, like 
For instance, friends, the 460 I just sent to Caleb, he broke the recoil rope. There was a brand new rope in there. I don't know how he did it. He broke it on the second day. He was laughing, so was I. But that's the kind of stuff that happens with old saws. So, um, again, I don't want to send you guys a headache. Now, okay, everything looks good in there. I'm not concerned about the bearing pockets. These bearings, I think, could be reused, but this one won't even spin now that it's been in the uh, ultrasonic. Okay, we're again, we're making sure there's no corrosion in here. And it looks okay. Now, this looks really bad. So what is this? I don't like it, but when the saw's together, it looks good. Again, let's throw the two case halves together so you guys can see on what I'm uh, what I'm talking about. Okay, it doesn't look too bad. Now, I will say, because a lot of you guys are interested in this series, a lot of you guys have these. This is probably the most... This is probably the highest selling saw that steel ever made. This is probably one of them. There's bazillions of these things out there. There are in my region anyways. Okay. One thing I will say, and remember, I blew up a saw from this. I will. One day when I get the urge, I'll throw that saw back together. Um, this, friends. You see this? Right here? See that chip there? Okay. One thing, I don't know, take a screwdriver right here, okay, make sure that paint ain't coming off. If it comes off easily, or it's bubbled or flaking, this might be okay, I'll probably hit it with some sandpaper. Here, right here friends, what about this? You see that? Look at that, see how it's coming off, see how it's flaking? This is a steel problem. I don't have this problem with Huskies. Now, steel guys, I know you love your steels. Uh, save your hate mail. Um, I've been working on these saws for a long time. Steels, this vintage, especially this vintage, 80s into early 90s, but mostly 80s. Um, the case coating, whatever this is, I don't know if it's powder coat. See, look, okay. I don't know if it's powder coat or if it's paint. I don't I don't know enough about these. I'm I'm not that guy. I like old saws, but I'm not a saw historian. Okay. Whatever they put on these, it tends to flake and peel. And if it flakes in here, that hard coating comes off and ends up in here, and it either ends up in your bearings or it ends up in your cylinder. And if it goes in your cylinder, you'll score the piston and cylinder almost every time. And uh and then you got to tear the whole saw down. So, again, when guys are saying, well, you got to use these cases, yeah, only only if I think that they're going to be fine. Now, the verdict on these, they don't look good. And if you guys are okay with it, because, again, one of you guys is getting this saw. I think there's a little hole right here. With your guys' blessing, though, I think I'm going to use these cases. When you put the saw together, they, it looks fine. And uh, I think they'll be usable. So... Um, what do you guys think? I know I've been asking you guys to comment, but this saw is for you guys, so. Um, this saw is really clean looking when you put it back together. And the parts you can see of the case look really nice, so. Again, um, I think I'm going to use these. I'm going to have a real good look at them off camera, because of course when you're on camera. Friends, I, I, I watch the camera screen when I'm filming. Um, I look through the camera. I don't. You know what I mean? I'm not actually looking at the part. So, um, this is the worst part right here that goes into nothing. And, uh, I think don't quote me, but I think it's going to be okay. So we'll, uh, we'll leave it at that. Uh, post a comment. You guys good with that? If not, we're pulling apart that dirty MS 260 and throwing that together. Let me know. Well guys, thanks for tagging along. And uh, I hope this helps you. This is this is real saw work. Um, you guys know me. I like to show reality. And uh, this is how it goes. You got to clean these things up. They are filthy. It's just the nature of the beast. And you really got to inspect these parts before you start throwing uh, parts at a saw. Make sure that the saw is going to be viable. Now, I think this saw is going to be okay. And I was looking through my... 
chainsaw bar collection. I have a ton of like 20 inch bars and uh, stacks and stacks of them, friends. And uh, I'll probably have to give them away to a local one of these days or uh, who knows, maybe I'll, maybe I'll bring them to Bunyan with me or something and sign them and give them away. But uh, I found in my stash a brand new 20 inch 325 bar, probably for one of my 026s that I had years ago. It's, uh, it's hanging up over there. So we have a perfect bar and chain to run with this saw and uh, that'll be good. Anyhow, thanks for watching. Take it easy. And if you don't like scrubbing, buy an ultrasonic. They are worth every penny. They're not cheap. At least this one wasn't. But uh, all in all, I've been super happy with this. They're easy to drain. There's a drain cock on the bottom. And uh, they're a good deal. Like I said, I was mowing grass while cleaning this. So that's the best way to do it. Anyhow, thanks for watching. Take it easy. I'll see you guys in a couple days. Oh, and for those of you that are still here, um, I get ragged on for years about not doing steals on the channel. So um, I bought two steals today uh, at auction again, just happened to be at auction, but uh, they're more modern whiz bang steals, stuff I've never owned. Uh, both of these saws are two saws I've never owned and you've never seen them on the channel. So. Stay tuned. We're not going to be throwing them into the mix yet, but I grabbed two steels and another Husky at the auction today. I haven't even gone and get, got them. Uh, I'll go pick them up uh, during the week when I have time. Anyhow, thanks for watching. Take her easy. I'll see you guys in a couple days. Later.